The Ivanpah Solar Plant is on 3,500 acres in the Mojave Desert. The plant utilizes hundreds of thousands of mirrors, each the size of a garage door, to reflect solar rays into three 450-foot tall towers. The energy concentration is so hot, birds are being burned to death as they fly over the plant, according to reports from the California Energy Commission. Joining me in studio is Jim Pugh with the San Diego chapter of the Audubon Society and by phone, Jeff Holland of Carlsbad-based NRG, which co-owns the Ivanpah plant. Welcome. Thanks so much. Now, Jeff, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Services released a report analyzing the bird deaths at Ivanpah. Of the 141 birds found dead there, about a third, they say, were killed by solar flux. The report calls Ivanpah a mega trap for birds of all sizes. How does solar flux kill these birds? I wanted to first thank you for taking the time to, to, uh, to talk to us before, uh, before reporting on it. But I just wanted to also stress that we take issues like this extremely seriously. And we've been working on efforts to minifi minimize the facility's environmental impact, but we'd like to state that the number of avian species with effects attributed to the project is significantly less than, than what's been reported. Okay, and, and we definitely want to get back to the, the species, but is the the uh, idea that dead birds are just a part of being, you know, having green energy of technology, or is there a way to solve the problem and prevent this from happening? Well, Peggy, if I could take that, every industrial project, whether it involves transportation or infrastructure improvement, comes with the risk of unfortunate and unplanned effects. Um, I think we need to keep in mind when we're talking about this in the discussion that climate change is by far the biggest threat to life on Earth, and we've spent billions of dollars at NRG on projects like Ivanpah and our quest to find ways to provide clean and sustainable and renewable energy. And this project itself, Ivanpah, provides clean energy to 140,000 California residents. And we will get back to the, the, the bird issue and prevention, because I know there's some things going on, but I want to ask Jim and bring you in on this. So uh, Jeff mentioned the, the birds, the species being impacted uh, by this. I understand uh, the report named 71 different species, uh, species including hawks and owls and, and things like that. Uh, what's the Audubon's take on, on the situation? Well, this is a real tragedy. A lot of the birds that, are <clears throat> that will be killed by, by this plant won't make it to San Diego. Uh, uh, so it has a real local impact, but it has a, has a you know, huge impact overall. And uh, we're really con concerned that, that, that they learn from what the problems are and they figure out how to correct them, that a lot of study needs to be done before anything like this is tried anywhere else. And that's one of our major concerns, is that all the details, all the problems get worked out at this plant before anybody tries to go farther with it. And, and, and build new plants. But, but Jeff, I do know that... that, that uh, I definitely know that Ivan Pa has put out some uh, ideas or plans on how to mitigate the situation. Can you tell us a few of those? Yeah, I certainly can. In fact, we've been working with California Energy Commission, members of the U.S. Fish and Wildlife, California Fish and Game, and the Bureau of Land Management to come up with, with uh, humane uh, deterrent methods. Some of those involve uh, simple things like waste and water containment to heliostat or mirror repositioning uh, for glare diffusion to things like anti-perching devices, screening and sonic deterrent methods, things that are employed in, in airports across the country as well that, that we've uh, seen has been effective in, in mitigating some of these issues. Well, Jim, what does the Audubon Society think about these, these ideas to sort of mitigate the issues? Are they enough? Well, yeah, there are a lot of, there are, there are a lot of other, other ways. That they can, the Fish and Wildlife Service of, of, of Forensics Lab has also pointed out a lot of other measures that can be tried. And, and we, you know, we really uh, we encourage them to really work hard on those and make sure they get them all right. So a lot of things can be done. We haven't scratched the surface. Uh, and, and as far as, as the, the kills, too, uh, you know, there, there are a lot of birds that are damaged that will die later, too. And so the numbers, uh, you know, the numbers could be far more than we know. And we, we, need to, we need to understand all of those issues before anyone moves forward. And you're talking about moving forward. And, Jeff, I'll point this at you. Uh, NRG actually wants to build an even bigger solar plant called Palin that uses the same or similar technology as Ivanpah with those towers. What's being done as that proposed plant goes on to make it safer for birds and other wildlife? No, Peg, I'm sorry, that's uh, a little incorrect. Well, actually, uh, completely incorrect. That's a, that's a different project. It's called the Palin Project, and that's being built by a company called BrightSource. And maybe the confusion is that BrightSource supplies the technology, the, the power tower technology, to the Ivanpah Project and a couple others, and now they are the ones that are seeking permitting for this other, this other Palin facility that you're talking about. 
Right, correct. I, I do stand corrected on that, and, and I understand that. But overall, when it goes forward as far as even bright source and building uh, future massive mega solar plants, are there plans that will address, do you think, as far as these concerns over wildlife and bird deaths? Yeah, and I think as, as Jim alluded to, you know, this is a process. This is a long process that we have to thoroughly test and monitor all these systems in accord with, with the avian and bat monitoring and management plan that we've put in place and working with the appropriate agencies to ensure that we're working through, uh, you know, our technical advisory committee and that we're doing the right things and, and we're understanding the issue that we're, we're doing, we're conducting the research that feeds the science and, and we need to study this and find out, number one, what the cause of the problem is and then work on, th on deterrent methods like I talked about to, to help mitigate those. All right, we are out of time. So Jeff Holland, thanks for joining us from Arizona and Jeff Pugh from the Audubon Society. Thank you for joining us here on the, uh, Jim Pugh, thank you for joining us here in the studio. Thank you, thank you. Thanks, for your, thanks for your time.